welcome to another episode of Not Too Deep, a very special 200th episode. I'm your host, Grace Ann Helbig, the first here with this guy that li- just lives in the floor here. Living in the floor. It's me, Mitchell Davis. This is a very fun episode. It's cash. It's silly. It's goofy. It's funny. I learned about Mitchell One has an updated sh- pants shooting story. Just leave him with that. That's a good hook. I think that's it. And we really delve into like what our friendship means to us. But the pants shooting story. But the pants shooting story is actually way more interesting than the other part. So welcome to the 200th episode of Not Too Deep. Not, not too deep. This episode of Not Too Deep is brought to you by Drop. If you spend with brands like Uber, Starbucks, Trader Joe's, and Sephora, then you're missing out on the free cash rewards with the Drop app. For a limited time, you can head to the Apple Store or Google Play and sign up for the Drop app using the code Grace G R A C E, and you'll receive a $10 Starbucks gift card right away. Make sure to link a debit or credit card to the app when you sign up to. Claim your reward. It's happening. Our 200th episode of Not Too Deep. 200. All everything we talk about has to be in 200s. And in, in like um, not quite the movie 300. When we hit 300, we're gonna do a full. You're gonna mo- kick three. me in a fucking pit. <laughs> we're gonna do 300 push-ups and sit-ups the whole episode. It'll probably take us so six many hours. farts. So many farts. <laughs> That's all I imagine is when I was in high school. I remember the first time I did push-ups, like the a presidential fitness thing. Oh, yeah. He, like Our gym teacher had to pull us aside and be like, just so you know, there's going to be toots. <laughs> Wait, what? There's going to be farts. My and if I hear any of you kids laughing at anyone else, Wait. just because they're doing their best but letting a little gas, you are going to the principal's office. And that you know what? Thing? That was the safest day of my life. <laughs> I remember going, I could fart now even if I'm not doing anything. And if anyone made fun of me, I'm like, detention, you, get the fuck out of here. My body's a healthy digesting system. I'm making a uh, a citizen's arrest. You're out. (laughs) I wish that teachers called their disciplinary like action citizen's arrest. This is a citizen's arrest. David, you're being a dick. Go to the office. Um, Wow. (laughs) I didn't realize that was an Ohio thing, that you had to be forewarned of the gaseous uh, systems that's that just how gonna... gassy we are they were <laughs> yeah. so gassy that this gym teacher was like I've done this a few times I know you've got it's, to be prepared in my best interest and yours to just let everyone know yeah. that you're all gonna be crop dusted yeah. right now yeah. he, and it was just it was just it, like he pulled us in like he was gonna tell us a secret and it was <laughs> you're gonna let a little bit of gas out guys I and I did yeah I am okay I believe that you did I never had that warning for, <sighs> in our New Jersey public school system um, nor did I ever hear anyone fart that I can remember. Really? I think I repress those memories because I find them like so embarrassing by like farts are the funniest thing in the world to me. I'm always the person who farts. If, I'm the person who someone, accidentally farts. If someone farts, I laugh so hard, but I also feel such empathy for the person that did it. That's really sweet. If someone like that's good of you. But then there's the people that fart and they don't could give a shit. Or for they a pun, or they do shit. You know, yeah. See, they do give a shit. Yeah, there are. Yeah, there are definitely people who are like, "Hey, check us out." Yeah, and they don't. They don't care. See, I was the opposite. It's like I'm the kid who reaches across the table to be like, "Thanks for letting me borrow that pencil," and then it's like, yeah. and, and the whole class is like. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah. No, the funniest moment is one of my ex boyfriends farted himself awake in the bed next to me. I do that once a week. Is that not a normal thing? <laughs> but I was like editing and he was asleep and he just fully farted and like sat up, shot up, like in a panic and was like, What happened? I was like, no, you're good. And I didn't have the balls to tell him that that's what happened until like a year later. I was like, wow. I don't know if you remember, um, but yeah, you fully like farted so loudly that you jolted your own body awake I out of full REM sleep. Yeah, I scare my cat <laughs> awake with farts all the time because she like curls your, up right there. Does your cat fart? Ever no, but she, she sneezes right in my fucking eyes sometimes. <laughs> I'll be like right in her face being like, you're the cutest cat in the world. She, and yeah. I'm like, oh, shit. It's a defense wow. mechanism. Wow, she, I'm blinded. She can't use her words, so it's, she has to get you out of her personal space somehow. She's purring. She seems like she likes it. But also, <laughs> it's just like, uh, like it's like, uh, she's like allergic to me for too long. I don't know. I love it. She did it last night. That's I, I, It's very vivid in it's my mind. It's very funny. Um, 
and I have 200 cats. Welcome to the 200th episode. 200th episode. Mitchell's coming in. Hungover. I'm, I'm here. I'm here. I love it. Um, I think that's the most appropriate kind of body sensation to have for the 200th episode. Yeah. Something's you, brewing in me. Yeah. Uh, we hung out this weekend, and it was so fucking fun. <laughs> Mitchell, when did you get so fucking funny? He was regaling Elliot and I with to- stories of <laughs> being in high school, like watching porn with his friends. And I... I can't believe you just fucking just sorry. dished me out right there. I mean, it's a common thing i think it's relatable it's it so was, funny God, it's i was real. screaming laughing all night long that i woke up the next morning and my abs hurt so <laughs> bad and i was like you just did a full like netflix comedy special for us in elliot's living room right well, now well elliot's juggling in the corner <laughs> rings <laughs> it turned into a weird night i like how in his tweet he's like to impress a woman i was like you were impressing me my man yeah, you made like, me feel cool the only eye contact was between the two of you yeah i know it was a really that was a that was like a true moment between us. I yeah. thought about it when I got home. Like I was one third wheeling. I was like, wow. I was fully third wheeling. It's so cool that Grace hung out with me and Elliot. <laughs> yeah, I'm so glad that you invited me into your relationship. <laughs> I feel so privileged. Um, <clears throat> we thought for a second, flirted <sighs> with the brief idea of trying to come up with some sort of wonderful format for a 200th episode to celebrate and then out of laziness and also just the way that the oh yeah we have cupcakes here that say 200 so yeah, that's as, that's the thing yeah that's the, as fancy and specific as we're getting for you <laughs> for use god that's so philly what i just said for you's listening that's <laughs> such a south jersey philly thing uh for you guys listening just imagine that there's three cupcakes on the table. Are you kidding? Okay, if you're going to have them imagine, we yeah. should do a lot better. So imagine there's three like- Three cupcakes. Ho- you ever seen the movie Hook? You know those pies oh, that got, are just icing? I got icing? opinions about Hook. Okay, so think three of those pies from the fight scene when uh-huh. he's like, they're doing like the whole thing. Think three of those crazy colors, pastels. It's like a mound of icing. I don't know how you're ever going to eat it, but no. it just says 200. It's spelled out in 200. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Also, why did any of those boys grieve when Rufio got murdered? in front of them. Why didn't they? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. They all need to be talked to about how to properly express their feelings. Well, but to be fair, they don't have a mother. So it's it's, it's all like, it's a, it's, it's just, a lot of layered emotional issues that no one is addressing in that film. Yep, I don't want to get I into know. it. Yeah, we don't, they just, they don't address things. They just either skateboard away or cacaw. Yeah. I That's mean, what we do. Tinkerbell. Lost perf- boys. <laughs> <laughs> if we want to know where the origin of toxic masculinity came from, I think it's from the movie Hook. That's <laughs> insane. Uh, okay, there's going to be a whole thesis written about this Look, now. Tinkerbell professed her undying adult love for yes. the only other adult yes. around her, and he just went, cool, nah, bye. Yeah, because he was a child mind then. Look, uh, you're okay. right. There's a lot to there's dissect. There's a lot of shit to unpack there. I don't want to hijack this episode with my thoughts on Hook, only because it's like the only movie. I watch like two movies a year. That's what I'm saying. Max. I can't believe you've even seen it. Elliot showed it to me, and it was like his favorite movie that I literally had to halfway through apologize for making fun of it so much. So oh. I was like, I forget that you were showing me this <laughs> genuinely because you love it. I love and it. And I'm just shitting on every angle of it's it. It's such a good Robin Williams movie, though. It is, yeah. He's fantastic. Oh, gosh. Um, and the guy who's like, it's snowing, and then slams the door. You've got to fly. You've got to crow. You've got to hook. It's just like, he's, <laughs> he's my favorite. I think his name's like Toodles. He's like, I've lost my mom. <laughs> also, Glenn Close is in it Dude, as a pirate. There's so many good things. Uh, I know. Maybe I should watch it again with what they call an open mind, <laughs> but I don't want to. Yeah. Um, no, we thought we'd just stick to our roots here, not change too much, and just answer and rant and converse about things that you guys have suggested, questions you have. I asked you on Twitter and Instagram, and there's a lot of questions. Let's hit as many as we can this episode. Let's hit 200 of them. Wow. Okay. Well, we only have this studio for an hour. So Um, we can hit an hour of them 200 later? uh I don't know how time or math works. Okay. I'm dyslexic. I asked for rant topics, curious topics, things you need advice on, um, just general questions and miscellaneous stuff. So, okay. One is, what audience would you like to hot dog cannon? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Yeah, starting it off. So, uh, I think, like, what audience, what grouping of people would you like to be in front of with a hot dog cannon? Uh, maybe just like a Trump rally. I think that'd oh. be that, like because that would be. I think they'd love it though. I don't know, but I mm-hmm. think it would just be funny if me, just like a non-Trump support, just ran out and was like hot dogs. And, and then I'm they, also imagining they're all freezing cold. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> emotionally, yes, yeah, they are. <laughs> <laughs> they. I feel like I would like to do it at like a Juggalo fest. 
They would love. I feel like they would love. That's it. what I mean. I would provide such joy and also sustenance because I imagine you know, and festivals like food is sometimes hard to come by. You know what? Let's just take this. I'm. Go, I want to go to one of those. Like, um, <gasps> I have a new answer. Go ahead. Okay, give I, me yours. I was gonna say in Patch Adams. I'm <laughs> referencing another Rob Boys movie. <laughs> yeah. He goes to a con, like a like a convention that's for meat packing. Okay, they would love. Oh, a, they would love a hot dog. Goddamn cannon. minds. They would lose it. Okay, what about this? A Celine Dion concert. Okay, you got me. You just come after my heart will go on in the crescendo. You just fucking start shooting out hot dogs. <laughs> All of the hungry husbands that came with their wives are going to be so thankful. Oh, man. If All it's, the hungry, hungry husbands. <laughs> you know, or we could just go to a baseball game where they really do that. Yeah. They really shoot hot dogs. Have you ever eaten a, a hot dog that was shot at you from a like a... Proud of people. No, but I got to shoot out hot dogs at VidCon a couple really? years ago. <laughs> yeah, cool. when I went with full screen for Not Too Deep, they were like, we have a stage there. Would you like to do something on stage? And I jokingly said, can I get a hot dog gun, hot dog cannon? And they said yes. And I was like, ha, ha, ha. And then they were like, so you, we have you at noon with the hot dog cannon. And I was like, excuse you, what? And they did like show me exactly how to use it. It was nuts. And I definitely pegged a couple of kids in the face. <laughs> oh my God. And kids ate it. That's awesome. Also, I think it was really helpful because those conventions, it's, it's really hard. Food. And the lines for food are so long. I was just going to say, the the hot dog that I ate out of the cannon was hilarious because it was like fully loaded, but all the toppings were at the back of the bag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where it was like it clearly got shot and was like yeah. momentum could not hold this hot dog no. together. But I ate it in the crowd. I was just like, hell yeah, it was a free fucking hot dog. I don't even <laughs> like hot dogs that <laughs> like, much. I'm just I was like, a vegetarian. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but like scooping the shit from the bag, putting it on there, being like, we're winners. <laughs> we are winners. <laughs> <laughs> um, someone wants to know uh, if they if we could share a hilarious or sentimental story that uh, we have offline that we haven't talked about before. We just spent the night reminiscing about like playlist lives, like early playlist lives yeah. the other day. And I forgot so much <laughs> about what happens at playlist lives that like the after parties are not the glamorous, like raging things that yeah. you would think they are. No. That maybe they are now. I don't know. I don't go. But I, they're, they're, yeah, we were just kind of talking about like the realities of just like. <laughs> just like where it would be like a party and then an after party but the after party was just like an empty room it yeah. was just like nothing was actually the, happening there the first playlist live <laughs> that we all went to that I think my brother came to my college roommate came to Michelle oh. uh, Mamrie came to and we got invited to like the after party by the guy that like ran playlists at the time and we were like cool we're cool and then we got up there and he had absolutely no booze no anything for anyone I think he just had a didgeridoo yeah and ma no that was a decorative piece of bamboo that you guys were convinced was a didgeridoo <laughs> that actually sounds right. That sounds right. But I do remember yeah. being with Timothy Delgado being like, that's a didgeridoo for sure. Yeah. And at one point someone was upstairs talking into it to someone downstairs. I remember that as well. We found, maybe and I sniffed out any scrapes of booze that were in that um, suite and we poured it because there was no glasses into the coffee pot that was there. And we yes. just like all passed this coffee pot around yeah. like gross cesspools of disease. <laughs> I remember seeing that coffee pot and going, I'm not putting my lips on that. No, That's... it was a poor choice all around. Well, I already didn't like coffee. So I was just like, whatever that is. And it is. was just straight whiskey. Was it? it? Yeah, because <laughs> we didn't, it was whatever we found. There was like half a little thing of whiskey and we're like, I guess this will do. And there's no cups for everyone. Like so. I said, me and Mike Falzone, or uh, excuse me, <clears throat> uh, me and my friend that I'm not going to name. Uh, <laughs> we just found a volcano and yeah. we were just like this Ripping thing. It. Yeah, we were like, well, well, no, we were like, I wonder if it's working. I wonder if it's working. <laughs> so we were we were there just being like, I don't know if it's working for like so long that by the time we found it, it was working. I was like, it's working. <laughs> yeah, it was 10 weeks later and you guys were still <laughs> in that suite. Yeah, everyone like, had I've got to go now. <laughs> it's playlist lifetime, dude. No, I mean, I, yeah, I remember we were all the first night of that convention. We were sitting by the pool, and we were uh, everyone brought like booze and food, and we were all just like slop troughs of humans <laughs> yeah, we were. by the pool because we completely disregarded all of the rules and regulations that this hotel had in place. Mm -hmm. And then finally, someone came How's out and was like, "You guys can't be here." We're like, "Okay, cool." And then like six. Six of us just stood up and walked away, but left like literally mounds of garbage I, and liquor bottles and beer cans. Yeah, I, I remember. Okay, so that night is very vivid to me because uh -huh. that was the first time I had ever met you. Yeah. And I made a point. It was weird. It was like I was I was good friends with every I mean, I am good friends with everybody who made playlists. And, yeah. And they were like, I, I told them, I was like, when Grace gets here, I really want to meet this person. And so Kevin was like, hey, Grace is here. 
mm-hmm. want to meet at the gazebo. And I was like, Oh yeah, it was this weird like And like two dudes came to my room and were like, We're here to escort you to the gazebo. And yes. I was like, tight, dude, tight. I remember it being like so oddly formal yes. that I was like the presentation of Grace to Mitchell. Yeah, it was a very Game of Thrones, like we were either gonna get married or duel. Yeah. And uh and I just remember they just it was like they sat down and all of a sudden there was like tons of booze around us and they were just like, Converse, you two funnies. And I was yeah. like, Okay. <laughs> yeah, then we were like fully gladiators on display having like a battle of conversation. Just around the pools that are closed. Yeah. And I just remember there being a fenced off area. And I was like, this is the coolest, weirdest thing I'm ever going to do right now. Yeah. It seems so chill. And I remember like having a passing thought being like, this is not, this is very disrespectful to this hotel, what we're doing right now. And then everyone was still going with it. So I was like, this is cool. I just remember being like, I don't understand how everything works anymore. (laughs) That was my (laughs) role. Like, I just remember leaving being like, this is so crazy that you can do this kind of shit. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. W- what is this? What it feels like to be famous? Like, what the hell? I know. I'd only been to one VidCon before that that I like paid my way to as like a guest and sort of just like kind of hovered and watched people from a distance. And so that was the first convention I got invited to, and I was just like, this is like fucking. Um, Hunger Games like everyone there are no rules here well, and, pl- and it's it's like it's like okay VidCon's a little bit more serious play this is a bit more party so yeah. it's like it's just it already was a little bit more party but then that first we didn't even we didn't know what was happening it was no, just everyone was riding high ugh. I drank probably over my weight in Fruit Loops vodka that whole weekend which still I love I still wear those denim jackets. There you go. That was me that whole weekend. I remember wearing a denim jacket being like, it's so hot in fucking Florida. What are you doing, dude? And, and, but then there's like a little like demon on my shoulder. Like He's like, stay on brand though. You got to be on brand. Stay on brand. This though. is what people expect for you. Don't you take that denim jacket off. Um, <clears throat> someone wants to, us to rant about how the carts at the grocery store never work. And well, I thought about this. Why I think about is that. I think about that one weird wheel. That like, yeah, it's always one wheel. Where, how? Why? Uh, I think I. I always imagine that it's like a just that got like a piece of hair stuck in it, which <laughs> then grosses me out to the fully <laughs> yeah. maximum. Because I'm like, who? How? What? This should never have happened. <laughs> <laughs> and also, we just need to address the fact that there needs to be a place to, like, you know, send the the bad. Yeah, we like need a just, little, like, just a pasture, a detention center, a pasture for old carts that well, don't work. Have you ever done? Because I get, yeah, I'm. You so, get what I'm saying though. Send them to the pasture. Wink, wink. Make glue out of them. You just break them down. Yeah, break yeah, yeah, them yeah. Down. The uh, I get so awkward, like in social public settings, that I am that person that pulls a cart out that has a full wheel that's just screaming the whole time and I'm like I can't I'm gonna just double down on this and this is now my cart that I walk around Target with and I'm gonna pretend I hear nothing and everything's fine I don't go back and switch it and I don't know what it is about like people think you're a psycho crazy but that's I know I don't I don't understand why I think it's easier to just commit to this terrible cart for like the next half hour of shopping versus taking the next five seconds and like returning exchanging it look I get it I don't I I hate I hate getting in confrontation, but if it's with a (laughs) inanimate object, (laughs) I think you just got to be okay with it. I'm learning to assert myself. Like (laughs) after this conversation, you see Grace at a target. She just flips a cart and goes, I don't, you don't own me. (laughs) I don't need you. I deserve better than this. (laughs) You walk away crying really proud. I have options. Yeah, you do though. You do. You can always get a basket too. Yeah. It's a safer. That's what I would honestly say is now I'm a basket boy. But see the basket, I try to be a basket girl, but I can't because I obviously want more than I can fit in my basket. And then I look like that crazy person that's like two hands, like knuckles red on the basket being like, (laughs) I made the right choice. I didn't need a cart. I didn't need a cart. It's just like (laughs) gallons of milk flying everywhere. See, I find that as a fun challenge in the grocery store. There you go. I love when someone's like, do you need help? And I'm like, no, (laughs) no, it's balancing on my head for a reason. (laughs) (laughs) This is all purposeful. Get away from me. Someone wants to know, why is it so hard to find a new job? It's just fucking the economy, Trump. Is every, I mean, do we want to be real or jokey? Or I mean, I think that's a little bit real and jokey at the same time. I think it's hard to find a new job because... I mean, Paul Rudd looks so good at 50. We're never... I don't... They're never yeah. going to need me. No. <laughs> they're no. never going to need me. You know what I'm saying? That's that's the problem I'm running into. They're like, yeah. we already got Paul Rudd doing it. And yeah, I'm like, God good. damn! He's 50! <laughs> He's too old to be playing. A, he's like freaks and geeks. We're rebooting it. He's yeah. going to be the main kid. What? 
They're casting me as the teacher. What? Oh, yeah. It's I'm kidding true. about all that. I'm he, sorry. He looks great, though. He does. He looks so good. How does he do it? Do it's got to be a skincare thing you or think he's the Illuminati. A robot? You think he's AI? Oh, you think it's a robot situation. I think it might be AI. Oh, you think he's... I think he... If, if, Hello, I am Paul Rudd. If they're going to make an AI robot that infiltrates the human race and brings us all down slowly as it's a society, Ant-Man. it's going to be Paul Rudd. He's charming as fuck. No one would suspect it. Wow. I'm creating a conspiracy theory that I really hope... That's why I'm honestly not saying much. I want people to just linger with it by themselves. It's the lizard person. Sit with that. Watch the videos. Slow them down. Look at his eyes. <laughs> Zoom in. <laughs> I want to see a conspiracy video on Paul Rudd by the end of tonight. Please and thank you. <laughs> on that note, we're going to take a quick break while you guys all start collecting your footage for your conspiracy theory videos. Tonight. And we'll be right back with more Not Too Deep. This episode of Not Too Deep is brought to you by the OK Cupid dating app. OK Cupid is the only dating app that finds you someone based on who you are and what you're into. The OK Cupid dating app asks you fun and meaningful questions that matter to you so you can be seen by the people who are going to be into you. From questions like, would you pay an extra $5 for guac? To, are you close with your family? And did you vote in the last election? You'll see tons of answers that lead to great conversations and great dates with people who feel the same way that you do. Tell people about your favorite album, your last great trip, or your favorite podcast and let the love roll in on the OkCupid dating app. Whether you're looking for that person to join you on a long walk on the beach or a short walk to the pool bar, they are waiting for you on the OkCupid dating app. Be yourself and enjoy all the awesome people like you who want to meet you on the OkCupid dating app. Download the free OkCupid dating app and find your next great date today. Not, not too deep. This episode of Not Too Deep is brought to you by Bloom. Hug Me Deodorant by Bloom, that's B-L-U-M-E, is an all-natural, safe, and sustainable deodorant that really works. Hug Me Deodorant is made with probiotics. The probiotics encourage your body to make more good bacteria, and as a result, your body produces less bad bacteria, so B-O doesn't exist. Mainstream antiperspirants contain aluminum, which gets absorbed into our bloodstream and has been linked to cancer. Hug Me Deodorant is safe, sustainable, and leaves you with no smell and no sweat stains. It lasts for at least 24 hours, so you don't have to reapply throughout the day. It's rated the best deodorant ever by the New York Post. Hug Me by Bloom keeps you feeling good, feeling fresh and super huggable. Right now, you'll get 25% off your first stick and free shipping when you text GRACE to 47 Four seven four seven. This is a special offer you can't get anywhere else, and you support Not Too Deep when you support our sponsors. So text Grace to four seven four seven four seven and get twenty five percent off your first stick of Hug Me deodorant. If you guys have been listening over the years or know me at all, you know that I cherish deodorant. It is the only way I shower. And if you don't love this Hug Me deodorant, you can return it for a full refund, no questions asked. Text G R A C E to four seven four seven four seven. Has there been anything that someone said to you that was so off-putting or weird or important and helpful that, like, sticks with you? That, I mean, actually, I mean, there's a ton of stuff. The first thing that pops in my head is something Kevin said, actually, to me once. Uh, Kevin Kanjit, who was just like— And Kevin is, for people that don't know. uh, He was my first manager. Uh, He was, like, uh, the Playlist Live. He was the guy that had the terrible after-party at Playlist. Yeah. Calling you out, Kevin. You know. (laughs) Mamrie and I said it to your face, too. (laughs) But uh, he— I remember once I was like freaking out on the phone. He was like, whoa, 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 whoa. The things that you're doing are just stepping stones in your life to get you from from level to level. Hmm. And he was like, you can't let this one thing be so big when really it's just a pebble that you're using to jump through this like river. And I just remember I was like, hubbity hubbity what? (laughs) And then all of a sudden I was like, I remember writing it down and I was just like, you might be the smartest person I've ever met. And he was like, that's not true. You're just freaking out. And I was like, okay, that's not, you're right. You're not. I'm yeah. sorry. You're so dumb. You're so humble. Uh, but uh, but I just remember that still, like whenever something bad happens, I'm like, ah, that's just a stone though. I'm just like, got to step to the next one. Yeah. Yeah, it's that's, weird. That's a- uh, Lily pad and like a frog. Yeah, that's super helpful. You're in your own game of frogger. Yeah. I can't, yeah. Just waiting for that car to get me. <laughs> yeah, I keep getting hit and going back to the sidewalk. Boop, boop, boop. Um, Just responding. <laughs> yeah. uh, someone on uh, Instagram said, I want all the Instagram questions. I saw that you said ask Instagram for like the first time. Yeah, for one of the first times. I go back and forth now. Uh, but 
And it's cool Instagram. because Instagram, it sends you so many. Also, everyone doubles up. I think people don't realize if they hit send, it sends they it. They know exactly that. that, um, that they but just I want, also they love, just, it's called spamming, Grace. Yeah, They're I hitting also, you with it. But I love so much is that like I ask for assumptions and things like that. And sometimes people are really mean. And they're like so direct and blunt. But You're they're, kidding. But their names are there. It's not anonymous. I don't think they realize that it's not anonymous. Like this is you guys are just being straight up mean with your names attached. You guys to are it. dicks from Macy. Um, <laughs> um, but someone wanted to know what is something that everyone looks stupid doing. And I was like, this is such a great question. And it made me try to think about like, what is something that everyone looks stupid doing? Oh. I mean, falling down. I was going to say learning how to skate. Everybody oh. looks so dumb when they're first learning how to skate. Yeah, that's true. Or learning how to ride a bike. It's an adult learning how to walk again. And that's the funniest yeah, thing in yeah, the world. Yeah. Like, I got this. <laughs> <laughs> like their arms become like two sticks and their legs just like freeze completely. Like there's no joints in a body yeah. once their skates on it for the first time. Yeah. It's just like, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Ooh. she's shaking. Pogo sticking. Uh, I think it's really difficult to make pogo sticking look cool. You, okay. Also, you know what else is something that doesn't look cool, but like it can look cool? It's like when someone's bad at parkour. Oh, yeah. I love bad parkour. <laughs> like really good parkour. I'm like, whoa. But when someone's like parkour and then they just do like a normal hop, I'm yeah. like, dang, man. Tiny parkour. Mamie made up when she was drunk. <laughs> she just started doing teeny tiny parkour. She's like, tiny parkour. And she just like taps a wall. Okay. Now, if it's that small, if I'm it's in. it's purposeful like that, it's very <laughs> it's funny. It's like right now I'm doing it off this cup. <laughs> yeah, I feel like no, everyone looks stupid taking out their contacts. Uh, I, I, that, I, I don't even think about that. That sounds horrifying. <laughs> Just touching your eye like that shouldn't be a thing. Or putting on mascara. I think everyone looks really dumb doing. I mean, if we're going to talk about like a makeup-y thing, I don't even know what it's called, but it's like a clamp that people use to make their eyelashes like curl up. Oh, oh. You know what I'm talking about though? A cl- oh yeah, the eyelash curler. It, yeah. Uh, every time I remember the first time I saw my <laughs> grandmother like using that. Like a vice that. grip yes. on your eyelashes. And, okay, so I was like a little kid and uh-huh. I'm I'm just talking to her and she's in the restroom doing like her makeup and I'm just like, "Hey, real quick." And she just turned to me holding that in her eye and I was just like, <laughs> ah! I mean, I remember just <laughs> literally being like, "You're in your eye." And she's yeah. like, "No, no, no, it's just a there's a f-. Like, and my I was grandma's like, a transformer." And I just remember being like, why the fuck would yeah. any person do that to their face? Yeah. And then later that night, I obviously snuck in there and did it to my face. <laughs> and first off, I first can off, fix your little Mitchell being like, my eyelashes here. looked amazing when I was finished. I had never looked more wide awake and refreshed. <laughs> Two, it was kind of sticky and it kind of stuck for a second. Oh, that's the most horrifying thing of uh, all time. Okay, so panicked 12-year-old me, I remember just letting out a little shit. (laughs) 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 Just being like, I've made a mistake. Well, that's, I've heard horror stories of girls chopping off their whole eyelashes because they use it too hard or it's like the padding's not there or something. And that, when I heard that that could happen, scared the shit out of me. That's terrifying. It's very, very tel- terrifying. Wow. Um, But I'm glad that you did that. I did it. I had, to- <laughs> I had to. I also don't understand how they haven't upgraded them or made them any less like terrifying. Yeah, they, I mean, they look like a device that like medievals would be like, I'm going to use this on you later and it's torture. <laughs> and you're like, you don't even know where it's going to clamp down. <laughs> You would never expect, if you would, if you showed anyone that, like from another planet, you're like, where do you think this goes on me? They'd be like, I don't know, your eyelashes, the little hairs on your, no. No, you would I, never guess that. You would, and also you'd never be like, that's a thing that I need. I'd be like, that's how you circumcise someone. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing. That's the thing you use to cut off the ends of cigars. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which honestly doesn't look much different. Uh, someone wants us to rant about answering professional emails uh, and how it's the worst. I'm awful. Anytime a professional email comes in and Melissa knows this firsthand because she constantly has to re-email me things because I just go, oh, this needs a professional answer. I'll shelve that and answer that later. And then I just completely forget about it. I, I purposely hold emails a little bit longer so that I can always start them with, I'm sorry, I'm two weeks late. So that <laughs> yeah, then my, it's always so like, then sorry my, for the delay. Yeah, so then my professionalism can be cut short. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? I can go, they, I, can ex- they know what they're expecting. I was you. I was really in a bind here, bud. Sorry, <laughs> but you know what you're saying is right. What I'm saying is wrong. Cool, bye. Okay, cool, bye. 
Let's hang out. <laughs> Let's meeting. Coffee, lunch. We got it. Bye. <laughs> do you have um, like a, an email signature? I do. I have three. What? I have okay, three. what are they? I have one for when I'm fucking around. And it's my- <laughs> one for when I'm fucking someone. <laughs> no, no. When I'm like fucking around and being like a little shit to people or it's just like being funny. <clears throat> uh, and it's it's my name. And then it, it's, uh, it just says forever that live, love, live, dude. And <laughs> then I have a professional one. It's like my name with like all of my links and all that like crazy. Creative director and that kind of stupid shit, um, or and creative consultant uh-huh. if you need one. There um, you go. But uh, and then and then I have a third one for if it's my first time emailing someone that is like just my newest project happening because I feel like it's easier to digest. Wow, good for you. You gave you didn't yourself options, that, did you? No, I yeah. feel like that's extra work to have yeah. to figure out who's getting which email signature. Yeah, I'm doing the childish Gambino dance. I feel good about it. <laughs> Do let me do, let me do. Uh, do let me do, let me do. So, I love you. Okay, sorry. Someone says, how often are you high? No judgment. I'm right there with you. You should film high. Um, I mean, I'm, I think... Uh, people, I can't do it publicly. I get high to go to bed. Yeah, I was going to say, I, and I get high to like do art or work out or just like... I'm not... I'm not like a publicy. I don't know. Yeah, I I'm, can't. I know like a lot of my friends, like that's their choice versus like drinking. I'm also like an iron lung. Like I I mean, mm. to get me like stoned blown, yeah. you know, I just, it takes so much that I'm like, just keep your money. So let's, <laughs> yeah. just, let's just save a You're little bit. You're your own expensive date. Yeah, I can't do it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> It's but, not worth it. Yeah, like even if I am, I, I genuinely, I don't think anybody even knows. Mm. No one even knows. I could be high right now. That's, I have, no, that's uh, the friends that I have that smoke like regularly and are fully functional. You never know. What the fuck? I don't like this. For the people listening, he's doing a whole charade. What? <laughs> no, I was just listening to you. Oh, thank you. Someone wants to know, uh, what's the most concerning smell? Not bad, but just questionable. A uh, fart in an elevator. Oh, that is a concerning, but awful, awful. Also, I mean, a fart in an elevator that is like rancid, because yeah. then I'm concerned that that person's having a terrible stomach issue that day mm-hmm. yeah. that's concerning i also think like a wet rusty smell is always bad or a fire gas fire yeah fire yeah. is usually i bad. smell smoke uh, like gun <laughs> kickback yeah um oh you know there what's another thing though that if i smell it i'm like oh that's not good oh or like ooh, curious i got a good one what when you open the fridge and it smells like bad food but oh. there's no food in it yeah. you know what i'm talking <laughs> yes, about yes that's a bad smell have, okay have you ever had this happen yes <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you have. Have you ever had your car smell like a fart, but you've never, you haven't farted? Okay. And someone tried to explain that it's the air conditioning bringing in uh, air from the outside into your car. Because I've had that happen a couple of times where I go, did I just shit my pants and I have also lost feeling from the waist down? <laughs> I, okay. That is not what has ever happened to me. But my car, I used, I don't know what the deal was, but there was bees always in my car when I used to get into it. And that's not a smell, but goddamn, if it didn't suck. Every time you go in, you're like, fuck, there's three bees in here. I mean, this is a small two door. You know what I mean? There shouldn't be bees in there. How are you even getting in there? I don't even like the windows being down. So like me getting in, it's just like me putting myself in a cage with three things that could kill me. Yeah, I just, oh. that might be the actual worst, next to drunk driving, the worst thing that could happen yeah, in can a you car. Ma- can you imagine <laughs> pulling out of your driveway being like, fuck a bee! Oh, now I'm in the hive! I just knocked I off my own <laughs> headphones. That's literally how it was, though. <clears throat> That's it was- a, I, uh, I was, it was very funny. I, I was in a therapy session yesterday, and it got totally uh, usurped because a bee got in the room, and I learned that my therapist is very scared of bees. Look, <laughs> so bee, it look, took like 10 minutes for us to shoo this bee out. I have, look, bee <laughs> You are so important to everything. Bumble baby, nothing against you. Oh, that's true. We've but actually themed out this whole <laughs> podcast for 200 episodes around this creature that scares the fuck out but of me. But here's the thing. Bees, you got to back up, okay? Yeah, you guys like, know you your do place. your thing. We're not going to mess with you. We already know that we like need you. Yeah. But just stop hanging out and one my car. I feel like bees are clearly like those, you can't be in in people's meetings. Yeah. I think these are like those drunk frat boys that are just looking to fight someone, and you're like, guys, you're actually good people. Just calm down. No one wants to fight you here. And like, no one wants to fight. What if we fight someone? Hey, look, what did I tell? Why this is why like, day oh. drinking isn't a thing that everybody does. You need yeah. to chill. You're like, okay, oh, fuck, Chad's here. He's gonna try and punch. He's someone. got pollen all over his face. He, he's so fucked right now. Uh, Tim with six M's is here. I hate him. Um, oh God. So, okay. There's, there's no more. No, no more, more questions. No, there's so many. <laughs> um, 
Uh, let's see. What's what is one thing you would love two hundred of, and one thing you would hate to have two hundred of? Mm. One thing I'd hate to have two hundred of STDs. Oh wow! Yeah, that's a lot. That's the first thing that comes to my brain that's immediately. A, yeah, wow. <laughs> for some reason, for me, I was like poison. <laughs> I was like goblets of poison. Sorry, Game of Thrones just came back. And oh that's yeah, like, yeah. I was like, it's on the brain. It's on the brain. <laughs> Very tough poison. I mean, valid answer. I would also hate to have. But I'm. I imagine like a chalice of poison. <laughs> yeah, like, you don't have to drink it. Yeah, I, I don't know why. Like it's bubbling and it's like but green. But it also just be like. Like very annoying to have two hundred of them around. Yeah. How do you get? How do you dispose of poison without like ruining your pipes or something? <laughs> <laughs> but what's one thing that you would love to have two hundred of? Oh man, two hundred. I mean, my first answer is like French bulldogs, but no, the maintenance on two hundred French bulldogs would all the drive shit. me crazy. All the running noses, uh, all, all the, the breath that they all can't the take, inabilities <laughs> to breathe normally. <laughs> It's like we bred those dogs to just be like, noses? What are noses? Why yeah. do they need those? What if we took a dog's snout and we scrunched it like an accordion? The main thing that a dog uses to just like locate <laughs> anything. What if we just fuck that all up? <laughs> yeah, we took its <laughs> primary sense and just really <laughs> handicapped it. <laughs> oh, man. Um, 200 of? I'd say like maybe 200 more bucks in my pocket. Oh, that's nice. That'd be nice. That's a, that makes sense for sure. Yeah, maybe 200 more hairs in this beard of mine that I'm trying to grow. Oh, okay. You know, I'm trying to think lots. That here. always blows my mind that like men's facial hair grows differently and like some of people have patchy. What is that? Do you know why? Because uh, we're all different. Oh, okay. yeah. No. Yeah, everybody's right, different. No. It's crazy. Jeez, I got to stop looking at the world like a blanket of everyone is exactly the same. Okay. I thought equality was a thing, but I guess not. So <laughs> I'm so sorry, but that was, I had to do it. <laughs> People are like, what the fuck is this episode? Guys, yeah. I'm so glad that you like, enjoy me on this show, by the way. It we, makes me feel so good when I get tweets. Oh, they, <laughs> you are the guest that people respond to the most. And trust me, it makes me go, how is this happening? <laughs> Same. Every time I leave, I'm like, this is the one that's going to lose everybody. No, it's great. <laughs> and then they're like, that bit was the best. I'm like, what? Oh, yeah, because someone did ask. They said, would Ooh. you consider revisiting the folks in your office you work with improv from the first episode? <laughs> and it took me a second to remember what that was. Oh, we got so much backlash for that. Did we? Yes, Why? I did. Because we said it about a person. And everyone's like, you do not refer to people as it. And, and, and of, now, course, of course you don't. You'd never say that. You would never. And, but, but we were <laughs> Like, I remember when we got the email, I looked at you and I was just like, but none of these people are real. I don't understand. I don't understand. Oh, I don't. We got an email about that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. That's how. See, I don't respond to my business emails. <laughs> that's how we buried unread in my inbox somewhere yeah, it was from one of, six years ago. <laughs> it was just one of those jokes that I remember. I was like, rats. They got me. They got <laughs> yeah. me. And I didn't but, even see it. And now, I mean, you can't. It, now it's even Oh yeah, it's, saying. Yeah, no. I mean, and, well, and also <clears throat> it was. It's okay. I will say there was a silver lining to that. And I feel like it was a way for a lot of people to educate me. And I learned so mm -hmm. much that year about like, no, that's true. Them, they how to how to pronounce and asking for like, what are your pronouns yeah, and stuff? Gender. Like, yeah, it was just amazing. Yeah. When people strive to educate versus like, didn't expect scold. that twist, did you? Hey, we find <laughs> silver linings. It, and, no, I remember, though, I was just like, <laughs> I've got to learn all this. Well, then. for people that don't know this context, the game, I think, was like, I just gave you a name of someone and you had to describe like as if they were your coworker, what they were like. Yeah, and I was I was describing in my mind a person that was just one giant amoeba, <laughs> yeah. and so that we we said it because you're like we could not tell if it was the like what it was is like I think what the joke. I, this yeah. is this was also years ago. <laughs> this was literally six years this ago. This was probably. almost I want to say seven <laughs> lifetimes ago. It was yeah. We in were, internet years, this was almost seventy five years. We were both in our mother's stomachs, and they just put two microphones <laughs> up to the belly buttons, and we recorded the whole episode. It was really great. Oh, Mitchell's heartbeat sounds so nice. <laughs> It's going to be such a funny guy someday. Um, a lot of people were asking to rant about music festivals and Coachella. Um, I didn't go. I don't know. You didn't, but you watched the live stream, right? Oh, the live stream this year was amazing. And that's what you, I mean, you made a good point that you were like, my, the best seat for these performances was in my apartment watching this live stream. I just kept thinking about that sketch from Portlandia mm -hmm. where they're like, <laughs> drone yourself there. It's like, don't actually go to festivals, just wear a headset and uh -huh. we'll have a drone there walking for you. Because I was like, that's what I feel like I'm doing with this cameraman. Yeah. Like I'm sitting on my couch enjoying like a, all my nice, cool, nice things, a bathroom in my bed and all that stuff. <laughs> 
and you guys can be sweaty and stuff. But the I mean, the performances were so HD that there were moments where I was like, this looks like a, like a 90s movie. And also, like I mean, 60 frames per second. Like, it was amazing. That's and when you're there for the when you want to see just the performances, like I get if you want to be in the environment, like experience the people around you have your lungs fill with dust and like mm -hmm. contract any sorts of you know the illnesses yeah, in a, variety, yeah, a variety of ways that's your thing but you know if you really want to see the performances what a great way to do it exactly for like, free right and uh, that's the thing too is i was just like anyone who was actually there there was like probably people talking <clears> and all this stuff like they like the childish gambino set was like he was mic'd up they were following him like even when he went off stage, they followed him and he you see him like hug Janelle Monet and stuff. Like oh, it's that's so cool. it was just You got to see a lot of intimate moments that you wouldn't get to see in the crowd. People definitely were like, Oh, I'm gonna utilize the camera and keep it as part of my performance. Mm. And I I loved that this year. Like it was just so visual and there was just things that they were like I can only say they were doing just for the camera. Mm, and okay. I'm like, no one there knew that that even happened. Right, right, right. And yeah, it was really great. You're I, getting these little slices of life. I illegally recorded a lot of it. What do you mean? You're not allowed to record it? I mean, I don't think you should, but I definitely wanted oh. to rewatch some of it. And I it's was just for like, you. Bloop. Yeah, it's just record. You. Well, that's the thing. I went online to try and find the performances they're and they're, none of them are there. Yeah, because some people are like, like waiting that. to put them up and they do their own thing. But I was like, I have to be able to watch this again. This I don't so like good. that. Um... Someone wants to know worst acting you've seen in a TV show or a movie. Oh man, I don't know. This is a interesting question. Worst acting I've seen. I don't know. I remember. I remember the one movie I ever really wanted to walk out on was Anger Management, hmm. but I couldn't tell you why. I saw. I went to see it when I was in high school with like my best friend at the time, and I remember both of us sitting there being like, "This is." bad like this is very very bad um and i couldn't tell you why uh we stayed for the whole thing because we were good girls <laughs> we did, and we paid money <laughs> yeah i mean oh man it's hard i've never walked out of a movie uh just because i feel like if you pay for a movie you should see the whole thing right 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 but is there anything that i've just been like no actually you know what there's been a few musicals where i'm just like yep we're gonna stop here this is it <laughs> this is a good place to stop got it you're not uh I remember Sweeney Todd. I was like, we're going to turn you <laughs> off now. <laughs> that was the song that they cut out of the actual musical. Yeah. Well, I just remember halfway through the movie, I was like, this is the the store hot topic is a movie singing to me <laughs> directed I, by Tim Burton starring I, Johnny Depp. I, sure. I didn't see it. So I believe you're. Um, they eat humans in it. <laughs> he ate humans? Like people pies. Oh, and then they right. sang about it. Yes, that, that is right. Let I, me give you a shave. Uh, yeah. Let me eat your pies. I was yeah. just like, let me turn you off. <laughs> and I did. I fucking turned that shit. There was, this, there was just one scene where they're like at a beach and I was like, yeah, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most unbelievable part of this story. When I just was like, if they start singing here, I'm fucking gone. <laughs> I can't handle this shit. Uh, wow. Okay, we'll give you a second to get your shit back together. We're going to take one more <laughs> break and we'll be right back with more of your questions on Not Too Deep, our 200th episode. Support for today's show comes from Coca-Topia. After a long day, it's nice to unwind and enjoy some me time. And what better way to do that than with a delicious dark chocolate truffle from Coca-Topia? And they've sent me these dark chocolate truffles, guys, and they are delicious. I am a sweet tooth. I'm one giant sweet tooth as a human being. And so trust my, you know, recommendations when I talk about sweets. You can indulge in delicious chocolate without the sacrifice on calories because guess what? The dark chocolate truffle is only 40 calories, which is 45% fewer calories than lint. Plus it has less fat and less sugar too. It's the perfect treat after a meal, during a girls weekend gathering, or paired with a glass of wine. Treat yourself. Visit cocotopia.com and enter promo code GRACE at checkout to get 50 50% off your first order. Make sure you type the code in all caps. That's C-O-C-O-T-O-P-I-A dot com and enter promo code GRACE at checkout to get 50% off your first order. Indulge without the guilt. Not, not too deep. This episode of Not Too Deep is brought to you by Smile Direct. Let's get something straight 
your teeth. Smile Direct Club straightens your teeth for 60% less than braces with invisible aligners sent directly to you. Simply go online and book a free 3D scan at one of their smile shops or order an at-home impression kit. Then they'll email a preview of your new smile and once you get your aligners, one of the Smile Direct Club's duly licensed doctors will check in on your progress every 90 days. Visit smiledirectclub.com for real before and after photos from some of five hundred and fifty thousand plus satisfied grinners and exclusive for our listeners you can get one hundred dollars off your invisible aligners when you go to smiledirectclub.com slash podcast and use the offer code grace 100 you'll also get a 25 dollar amazon gift card with a free 3d scan at one of their smile shops or a 25 dollar rebate on an at-home impression kit that's one hundred dollars off at smiledirectclub.com slash podcast offer code grace 100 smile direct Directclub.com slash podcast offer code Grace one hundred. Shave. <laughs> oh, are you an ASMR person? You know, I like to say I'm not because I think it works that well on me. That just gave like that just gave me a weird. <laughs> you little... just ASMR yourself just now. Yeah, I, that sounded so perverted. <laughs> yeah, it did. Ew, are you yeah, ASMRing in, in front of me in public in a studio that we don't own? He ASMR'd all over himself. Um, we haven't even like finished dinner. <laughs> okay, let's speed round some of these. Speed round. <clears throat> um, okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Just, sorry, I'm looking through. I'm like, there's a, yeah, the, that's I like the, to start off my speed round real slow and annoyingly uh, Almost the ESPN sound. <clears throat> do, 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 do. Speed round. Okay, what were your biggest assumptions about each other? <laughs> um, I think I assumed that you were going to be like a really depressed, sad emo kid when in fact you were much like Everybody brighter and happier. I thought you were going to be way taller. Really? Yeah, I thought you were gonna be like a, like <laughs> like ret tall. I'm like I thought you were tall. gonna be a giant, like seven seven. That, well, I don't oh. know. I don't. I don't know why, but I remember watching your videos, being like, "That's a tall person." Wow. I mean, you're maybe the only person that came and said like you you're shorter than I thought. Cool. Okay. Speed round. Uh, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> da, 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 da. Speed round. If you were one of the Fab Five on Queer Eye, would you be fashion, hair, skin, culture, food, or decor? I've never watched the show. Well, which category would you be? Probably hair. Hair? Skin? I like hair. Oh, you would. What's been your favorite hair look? Hair, this. Right now? This look. You're I've, growing the roots out and I've you just, got the... Oh, yeah. No, not the not the roots, but just mm-hmm. like keeping it blonde, letting it just be flowy. I'm, I call it young David Lynch. Oh, <laughs> I can see that. Yeah. I'm That's just, very fun. Yeah. i just been having a lot of weirdness with it. Get the fact it. that it's still here, I'm just like stoked. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's that becomes more and more well, like my, the most. My the, family was always like, "You're not gonna have a lot of hair when you get older." <laughs> they sat just, you all down. I mean, it was just <laughs> like I just I just knew a lot of bald people in my family, so I was like, "This isn't gonna last." Oh, okay. And then when it keeps going, I'm just like, "Well, fuck, let's burn it now." I'll let's, ride let's this try it. <laughs> um, I think I would be who I don't know fashion, mm. and it'd just be you should wear an oversized sweatshirt and maybe some skinny jeans for sure. I have these cheetah shoes that you can wear. I think they'll look great on you. Yeah, you've been wearing those every episode. Uh, I wear them constantly. Until, they're the only shoes I've ever bought a second pair of. Well, not bought. A fan reached out and they had yes. found them. And so that's the <laughs> dumbest fucking answer to all of that. I hate myself. Someone was like, your feet look bad. Here's a new no, pair. No, <laughs> I, I, I kind of put it out there that I can't find these shoes and they're breaking and I love them so much and I wish I bought so many pairs and this girl messaged me and she's like, I found these on eBay. Can I send them to you? And it's the only time I've ever been that's like, so cool though. please, yes, I would love them very much. Wow, shout out to that person. I know, thank you so much. I'll take a pair. I'm tens. Um... Okay. Could you imagine if I started wearing those cheetah shoes? I'd be so mad at you. <laughs> I'd be like, let me have something. <laughs> I This is all I have. Uh, when was the last time you felt truly proud? Uh, a few days ago. I was just telling about this. I uh-huh. finished my sketchbook project. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's crazy. I the 600 pages of, of my art that now I'm like kind of pitching around as like a, a YouTuber art book. That it's, fucking rad. Yeah, my memoir. I finally so finished cool. it. Started in 2011 That's and I so finished insane. it this year about a week ago and Fuck. about a week. I'm sorry. Um but like I did it and yeah. I I did the last page and just had like a single tear come down my face and I was just like holy shit. That's this is my life. Oh. It's nuts cuz well cuz like I started it when I was like 
you know, really in the world of YouTube. And right. like now it's, I'm so, it's so different. My life's so different and, and you can see it happen. Uh, yeah. And your trajectory. I know there's a lot of kids that like get started in YouTube now, but you got started when it wasn't a viable business operation oh, yeah, at you, all. I refer to it in the book a lot as the Wild West, the digital Wild West. We didn't have yeah. a roll book. I was just riding around on a horse, just kind of seeing what I could it. do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just being like, let's, let's see what we can happen. And Oh. Yeah. So yeah, that's the last. When's the last time you felt proud? I felt really proud after interviewing Chelsea Handler on this podcast. I watched that. That was oh, good. Thanks. It was yeah. Good. It was. I was very, very scared, and I was like, um, I felt very proud that I didn't, you know, embarrass myself in a variety of ways. It was, no, it was great. I felt like you guys had a, a great vibe. It was almost yeah. kind of like a, a future talking to young. It was like you guys were yeah. very bouncing off each other. Where I was like, there could be a mirror here. I don't know. <laughs> No, it was very cool. I was just very nervous because she's very inspiring to me. And so oh, I was she, like, I just want to do a good job for her she, and for me. Yeah. And she's just, she just seems, I mean, obviously she clearly is, but she just seems so real. So fucking yeah, like, this is it. She's very, very present and very cool. And it's like actually doing like self-care, self-work. That's really inspiring to see. Love it. Yeah. Okay. Someone says, I've seen three people run into screen doors and I think <laughs> I'm next. So what is the right response? You just got to get your arms out there first. <laughs> You got to feel that door gotta, before you hit it. Yeah, you got to walk like you're blindfolded. Yeah, you can't be that excited about us going outside. Have you ever outside. walked straight into a door? Yes. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, I was going to like, has, I'm pretty sure if you don't, you haven't lived full, a full life. It's like shitting your pants. If you never shit your pants, what are you doing? Yeah. Why I, even wear pants? Yeah, it's like, <laughs> if, you, if you don't shit your pants at least once, then you you truly haven't ever shit. Also, what's the response? It's so freeing. I ran into a screen door. Uh, what was our, the question? <laughs> <laughs> Just what's the response if you're the one? If you run into a screen door, I ran into a screen door. Um, I might have the video still, uh, like two years ago down in Palm Springs over like 4th of July weekend. And I was just like on my phone, making a video to like go inside and change the music. And I ran full head, forehead first into the glass uh, door. And I just laughed so hard at myself. I think one other person saw it, but I, it's so, so funny. Also compilations of dogs running into like, um, sliding glass doors and screen doors is a really great time. It's all for me. It's always those clean glass doors at malls and shit. I'll think, oh. I'll think it's like just a square that you can walk out. I'm like, there's clearly no doors here. And then I'll just fucking ping it just yeah. like hard. Luckily, I have Ugh. like these fucking weird big kind of feet that'll hit it first. But yeah. sometimes this forehead gets it. And just, I'm just like, I mean, a way to prevent it is just walk kicking your legs first or your hands. Yeah. Or just <laughs> walk around yelling door, door. Is there a door, <laughs> door, door? Um, I promise people will tell you if you're doing that. <laughs> what's the response if you see a stranger? Like if someone right next to you just full on face plants into a, a closed door next to you, what's and your immediate response? Unless they laugh, I act like nothing happened. <laughs> I act like, oh, that's just a fucking thing that people do. You took that route. I'm going to take the door. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's kind of my response. Unless too, the person like, is like, <laughs> then I'll be like, <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you really hit it, didn't you? Uh, you're, you're okay, though. You're okay. It's pretty red, but you're uh, okay. You're a fucking idiot. Yeah. Oh, man. I mean, if it's my friend, I'll be, I mean, that's a whole different story. If it's someone I know who then runs into it. Yeah. I mean, then it's just then game on. Yeah, then it's. Uh, Every it's, finger I can point should be at them going, holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> you did what dogs do. <laughs> Birds die that way. <laughs> uh, someone wants to know, does Mitchell have a new pants shitting story? Yeah. <gasps> Yeah, I do. You do? I mean, did I already tell you the one about the ice cream? Where I ate the ice cream and then pooped on the couch? I really cut that down, but that's how it happened. You know what? I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to add one. Actually, here's here's my three things. Okay, you ready? Five spice ice cream. The couch. Me. I mean, do you have a lactose situation? We, maybe we found out. We don't know. <laughs> I do know that when What's someone five spice it's, ice cream, it's, uh, it was a, it was an exclusive ice cream that was uh, <laughs> very spicy and sweet and delicious. The five spice. Oh my god! And uh, I ate it and then fell asleep, and it just did not sit well with me. <laughs> wow! I mean, I'm glad it was your couch, though. Yeah. It was what, what did you do to the couch? What'd you do with the couch? Just after? a surprise fart. You know what I'm talking about? Oh yeah, you don't trust those. Yeah, it was one of the. And the but, See, but what what made it what made it though is the girlfriend that I was living with at the time. I I said, "Can you believe I shit the couch?" And she goes, "I did not know that you shit the couch." And that's when I that's when everything got less funny. And I went, "Oh, I'm gonna clean the couch though. Don't 
don't worry. Like I was, it's just a little bit. Like it was a, it was a uh, surprise there, fart. It was just a surprise. Just, it's was, fine. I wish there was a question that's like, what's the scariest thing your significant <laughs> other can say to you? And it's, can you believe I just shit the couch? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I genuinely was like, oh, you noticed for sure if I've noticed. But the, she was like, no, why would I have even looked? Wait, were you in the room? Was she in the room when it happened? No, I fell asleep on the couch. I was, I had, I was, was watching. It was in your sleep. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's, it's like I said. It was a, the fart woke me up, and then I was like, "Oh, that's not a fart." Uh oh. Look, sometimes in life things happen, and they're going to be really embarrassing. You got to know that it's funny later, and that's one of those things. I knew. Jesus. I was like, two weeks from now, this is going to be one of the funniest <clears throat> things. And I even remember going, "If Grace ever asked me uh, to do a pantry, I got another one now." Amazing. Also, you know, another <sighs> piece of advice from that story is always Scotch guard your couch. For sure. And also, <laughs> don't eat case. ice cream before you go to bed. I'm like that was yeah. just that was just like a thinking about like just the fact that it's a dairy product and then being like now I'm gonna go lay uh, down for seven hours uh, and it's got God. spices in it to make it hot too. <laughs> it's just like you, you should know better, Mitchell. You're an adult man. Oh my God, you that know? is so fucking funny. Came right out of the couch. Oh, I'm sweating. That was so <laughs> fucking funny. Yeah, I've had an ex that has done that as well. See, That's why it's, it's not even that funny. Weird. Like, <laughs> like it's not it's not a completely unique experience to you. So Pe- yeah, I've, people people act like shitting your my, pants is crazy, and I'm like, no, 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 no. That's why this a is lot a, of adults. If you drink alcohol, you question. shit your pants. Oh yeah, <laughs> my response to the person that had this happen, I had to go again. <laughs> even worse. <laughs> that I was like, I have not been around an adult that this happens to this frequently. <laughs> I know that this is maybe manifested on me because I ask people this question all the time, but oh my God. The next thing you know, someone's going to be like, babe, cold spaghetti just fell out my ass. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, all right, we got to fucking rebrand this whole goddamn podcast. Jesus. What oh. have you done to me? Oh my God. It's not that funny anymore Ooh. when it happens to you. <laughs> Um, I can't believe I said that with no like no know, qualms in my mind. Just like yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me tell you about it. Uh, I've been waiting. It's been bursting. <laughs> oh God, it's been great. I'm glad that you delivered. Oh, yeah, for Jesus. sure. For sure, two hundred, babe. Okay, someone's <laughs> know if Mitchell, if you and I went on vacation together, what does that look like? Uh, a mess. <laughs> yeah, that would be. We would not survive. I don't think we would survive. I feel like people might. We would be. I know for sure we would miss our flight back. Oh. <laughs> A hundred. <laughs> Us getting to our destination would be the most insane victory. I get lost finding my car at the Grove. Like, oh, there's no fucking way that I, I'm going to be I like, guarantee you, I would have booked our flights for like a month later than when we arrive at the airport. And then we scramble around to find new flights. I have to pay like 2000 extra dollars for new flights because I'm too prideful to just turn around and go back home and wait a month. <laughs> And then literally, it'll be like, oh, we have 20 minutes before our gate boards. Let's go to the bar. And then uh, you just suddenly hear our names being called over the speakers over and over again to get to the fucking gate. Oh, man. Yeah. Getting there would be like the vacation in and of itself. Yeah. I think we'd have a fun time. <clears throat> if I, anyone out there wants to sponsor an adventure travel show for Mitchell I'm and I. I'm so <laughs> in. I don't think you understand. If we just go places, we'll just rant about your place. Yeah. You just send us there. We'll, uh, we'll we'll find all the things that we can rant about. We would love to experience hotels in a variety of areas in which we can communicate to an audience our opinions and thoughts oh, on them. Oh, gosh. Um, yeah, it would be called The Not Amazing Race. <laughs> yeah, The Not Amazing Race. That's so good. I would totally do that with you, though. That'd be so fucking funny. That would be so so fun it's just two actual like it, it's like two underdogs <laughs> that you're just rooting for to get to their <laughs> destination and then if they get home that's like bonus that's just, like making have, it to the hidden temple we have live shows temple. but it's actually just us asking the audience for help for the things yeah, it's just directions. so like where do you get food here I lost <laughs> my wallet and my passport <laughs> immediately I left everything in the Uber again and my backpack's still <laughs> on the plane here yeah. is there any way that anyone here has a cell phone we could use <laughs> have you ever left What's like the craziest thing you've ever left while traveling or lost? Uh, just a pair of glasses. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. That That's was a bu- that was a bum out though. I remember I was just like, I all I, I will say without a doubt, I always leave my belt at every yeah every place I stay at. I always come home and I'm like, fuck my belt. Where's yeah. my belt? I don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. I 
to the point where I've now stopped wearing belts. I've just been like, I can't, you know, even if my pants need a belt, I'm like, fuck it. I just can't do it. (laughs) I can't. I'm losing money. I can't deal with the, like, departing this belt anymore. There's guilt just growing on me now. My grandma got me a belt for Christmas and was like, keep it. I lost that thing like two weeks later. (laughs) I mean, it was gone. (laughs) Maybe just get pants that fit. What? Just throwing that out there as a potential. No, I think you just no belt. Just stick to your no belt rule. Thank you. I was about to say that sounds crazy. What you said, <laughs> like what I say, is not it makes sense. Oh, this is so funny. As I'm looking at these um, questions for us on Instagram, I literally had an email come in from the hotel that I last stayed at that is sending me my hard drive that I left in my hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> That's got the whole show season two on it. Yeah, <laughs> but um, I have full on left my entire purse in next to the gate of an airplane i've gotten on an airplane it was at south by southwest one i have many stories of terrible travel happening for me at south by southwest but tyler and i were or was it maybe it was a different festival in austin tyler and i were leaving on the same flight together we're in the airport just talking to each other casually i have my purse next to me and then they like uh announce our flight is boarding we get on the plane we're sitting separately on the plane and i they come around with a drink cart and i go to buy a drink and i'm like Oh my fucking God. I literally left my purse full giant bag of everything on the ground next to the seat that we were just sitting in like an idiot. Oh. So that's, I think, why I wear backpacks way more often that's, now. Yeah. Because no, they stay on my back. That is terrifying. That just gave yeah. me like anxiety. And it's, I was so hungover from the festival that I couldn't even react like appropriately. I was just like, huh, okay. Well, <laughs> that's there. So what is now it's success? What's the most important things? Oh, all of your identity yeah. and uh, your credit cards and all your money. Okay. That's why there's two Grace Helbigs out there now. Yeah. There's probably a bunch scrambling around. I've <laughs> lost my IDs so many times. It's nuts. <laughs> uh, someone wants to know, describe our friendship in three words. I want you to go first. Oh, okay. Three words. Because <laughs> I, I don't, I, I mean, uh, so many words come to my mind. <laughs> uh, it's, um, uh, <laughs> shit. This is hard. Um, silly, stupid times. Silly, stupid times. See, I was going to say spontaneous, Uh huh. weird, funny. Oh, yeah. Impulsive, dumb fun. Yeah, it's yeah. like that. that, was that. <laughs> it's like, hey, do you want to go to a Dave and Buster's and just like rip yep. it up? I'm already, I'm actually, I'm already here. <laughs> I'm, I've been here since 10 a.m. That's so late. Yeah, you're here too? That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay, we've reached the end of our 200th episode of Not Too Deep, but we have a very special thing here. We have fortune cookies to give each other. Oh. Wait, do we pass these? Are these the, okay, we pass these. Two. I honestly don't know what's in yours. Okay. Nor Me, do I, I don't know what's in yours. I mean, I didn't even know I was giving you one, so... Okay. ASMR, here we go. Oh, I never get to do this. Oh, it's fun. Oh, okay. That's kind of fun. Yeah, it's That's kind of fun. Oh, I thought this was empty. I did too. Uh, that's, wow. Well. I feel like a guest on my own show now. This is very fun. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, I think we gave each other the wrong ones. <laughs> this, this is yours. This is yours. This definitely makes more sense. <laughs> This makes more sense. This makes more sense. Started, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, no, I don't. Oh, wait, uh, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. We got, I, I finished reading them. Okay. Do you want me to read first? <clears throat> Go ahead. Remember, <laughs> remember uh, when you were ta- taking uh, talking shit about Mitchell and he said he's a fucking precious genius uh, who makes anyone laugh on the cloudiest day? Oh, shit, wrong person. <laughs> Okay, mine says, remember when you were talking shit about Grace and talked about how she's one of your longest and closest friends and you're so relieved that you get to be there for her 200th ep? Oh, shit, wrong person. I like that. Cute. This is good. Melissa and Diane, thank you guys. That's so Sneaky cute. Sneaky bastards. Um, Mitchell, where, as always, can people find you and what you're up to? Because you're doing a lot of fun, sneaky projects, and I feel like you're one of those people that spontaneously will, like, show some new, cool form of new media that <laughs> yeah. pops up out of nowhere. Thank you. Uh, my website is cdemoji.com, where all my links are. What's it? CD emoji. Okay. And, uh, like, yeah, cdemoji.com. And you can check out everything there. And, honestly, I've been going live lately on YouTube. I've oh, been, cool. I'm a streamer on YouTube. That's not um, even supposed to be a thing. You're a Twitch streamer yeah, on YouTube? I'm a Twitch streamer. <laughs> I'm a famous Twitch streamer. <laughs> Who only goes live on YouTube. Oh, man. Wow. Well, I'm proud of you for, you know, mixing up the media. Right. There's your new there's your new canvas. No one needed. Um, And thank you for being here and 
joining us from out of the floor once again. I know. On our 200th episode of Not Too Deep. Thank you guys for listening to 200 episodes if you have. And if you're just joining us for the first time, I mean, I guess you're cool too. To celebrate 200, you should just go back and listen to all 200. Yeah, that's the only way to really celebrate. Not for me. I never listened to any of the old episodes. I listened to them all 200 times. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time on the 201st episode of Not Too Deep. Goodbye. Too deep, too deep, too deep. Not too deep with Grace Helbig. Not Too Deep is a production of Grace Helbig Incorporated, producer and edited by Melissa D. Montz, writing by Diane Kang, production assistance by Katrina Henning, post-production sound by Chris Henry, and an extra special thanks to Flula for the theme music.